Lab 3. Familiarization with your simulator. The goal of this exercise is to become familiar with the compiling, debugging and simulating a design with your simulator. We will use the multiplexer design and test bench described in the previous lab as a model for this exercise. This lab series is completely tool independent. You can use any simulator. Here we use Excelium 22.03 version. Please refer to your vendor documentation for specific instruction for simulating. We can run the simulator either in multi-step or single step. In this lab, we illustrate both. In the following lab, we stick to single step execution. These are the commands to perform simulation. In the multi-step method, we first compile with xmvhdl command. All the files that are to be compiled are given as arguments to this command. Compilation is followed by elaboration using the command xmlab with the compile top entity as the argument. Simulation is then performed using the command xmsim with compile top entity as the argument. Minus GUI simulation option is used to view the output from the GUI. This opens up the simvision GUI. Let us execute these and observe the flow. Go to the labs directory. We will work on the files mux.vhd and t underscore mux.vhd which are the design and test bench files for the MUX implementation as mentioned in the previous lab. Let us first illustrate the multi-step process. The first step is to compile the VHDL files using the command xmvhdl. All the files to be compiled are passed as input arguments to this command. We see that there is a compile error in the file mux.vhd at line 36. Let us analyze and fix this error. We see that there is an missing end process statement. Let us add this and recompile this file. We see that the files are now compile error free. Compilation is followed by elaboration with the compile top entity as the argument. Simulation is then performed using xmsim command with compile top entity as the argument. tb underscore max is the name of the top entity here. Minus GUI simulation option is used to view the output in the GUI. This opens a SimVision GUI where we can observe, analyze and debug the output graphically. The main windows in SimVision that the users interact with on a regular basis are Design Browser, Source Browser, Waveform Window and Console Window. Let us look at each of this in detail. The design browser is in the main window that the users use to navigate through the hierarchy. We can click on any component on the hierarchy. As we navigate, we will notice that object on RHS will change. For example, when I click that, we have a set of signals associated with this particular component under the objects tab. When I click on a different file, the objects associated with this is displayed under the objects tab. This browser displays the entire hierarchy containing all objects from which you can choose from. For each of these objects, we can also have methods associated with it. Let us select an object and right click on it and select send to source browser option from the drop down menu. This opens up the code associated with the object in the source browser. The source browser has a couple of key features here. First is that we have a sidebar which has number of tabs available to the user and we can simply expand this out. This allows us to do two different things at once. For example, you can navigate through the hierarchy while also looking at the source code. We also collapse we also collapse this in order to make it more compact. 
We can open the waveform window by selecting an object in the design hierarchy and by clicking on the waveform icon at the top or by right clicking on the object and selecting send to waveform option from the drop down menu. The waveform window also has a sidebar similar to that of the design browser and the source browser from which you can choose from. This allows you to do two things at a time which helps in debugging. Now, names can also be shown either in the signal name format or full hierarchical path by selecting the options from the drop down menu here. The cursor column is used to indicate the signal value at the current cursor time and we have a waveform window where we can view all the signal transitions over time. Toolbar on the top are fully customizable. The user can drag and move around as they like. Click on the play icon here to run the simulation. Adjust the time scale and zoom option. At 0 nanoseconds, the control signal show underscore A is 0 and hence the output should be assigned with the value of time underscore data which is all zeros. At 10 nanoseconds, show under A goes high and hence the output display should be assigned with the value of alarm underscore data which is F. This doesn't seem to happen because there is a functional error in the design file mux.vhd. Let us send the design file into the source browser and analyze the code. We see that the process sensitivity list doesn't include the signal show underscore A and hence when show underscore A changes its value, the process doesn't seem to be triggered. Hence it leads to functional error. Let us fix the functional error and rerun the simulation. At 0 nanoseconds, the value of show underscore A is 0 and hence the value of output display is assigned with the value of time underscore data which is all zeros. At 10 nanoseconds, the value of show underscore A is high and hence the output display should be assigned with the value of alarm underscore data which is F. On fixing the functional errors, we see output behaves correctly. At 20 nanoseconds, again the value of show underscore A is 0 and hence output display should be assigned with the value of time underscore data which is 3. Here, since the actual output matches the expected output, this design is functionally correct. This lab illustrates that all the signals read by the process should be in the sensitivity list. Final thing is the console window where the user can see all of their log file information and execute the commands. Now let us run the same simulation with single xrun command and observe the output. Name of the top level entity tv underscore max is given as the argument to the top switch. Minus GUI option is also given to view the output graphically. We see the compile error in the file max.vhd at line 36. Let us correct this compilation error and rerun the simulation. Add the statement end process. Also add the signal show underscore A in the sensitivity list. As we have already illustrated the consequences of missing signals in the sensitivity list. Let us rerun the simulation with the changes. Select the top file. Add to the waveform window. Press the play icon. Adjust the time scale and the zoom option. Here we see that at 10 nanoseconds show underscore A goes I which should drive the value of display with the value of alarm underscore data which is F. The actual output is matching with the expected output upon rectification of the functional error.
Similarly, at 20 nanoseconds, the value of show underscore A goes low. Hence, the value of display should be assigned with the value of time underscore data, which is 3. This verifies the functionality of the design. We can execute the extrant command in three steps. By running the extrant command along with minus compile option, we can compile the files. By running the extrant command along with minus elaborate option, we can elaborate the design. We can run the simulation by executing the extrant command. Click on the top file, send to waveform, press the play icon, adjust the time scale and the zoom option. This gives the basic understanding of the working of Exilium simulator.